Hey, coin collectors, I ready to embark on a swilling journey through the world of rare coins? Today we bring you a preview of the hidden treasures to look for in 2023. Hit that subscribe button below this video and let's get rolling. 16. This is attractively toned. 1964 deal was what Diamond missed 67 condition with full bands. The process of toning is caused by a variety of factors including exposure to air, moisture, and chemicals. It is a natural process that takes time, and it's not always consistent. This means that the natural tone coins are scarce, especially in superb gem grades, and they are therefore more valuable than the coins that have been artificially toned. Dominant charcoal copper, obverse toning yields to the splash of more vivid gold, blue, and pink iridescence towards the lower right border, and toned on the rivers with small surfaces and billowy mint pores throughout. It was sold for $920. Number 15 here is 1951. There was with Diamond Miss 67 condition with full torch virtually pristine and conditionally rare for the issue. As such, the superb gym exhibits lovely obverse toning in iridescent sandy apricot, salma pink, and champagne gold. The reverse is essentially brilliant and both sides possess a full endowment of smooth setting luster. It ended up selling for $11,110. Number 14. This is 1971 S. Eisenhower dollar in Miss 67 condition comes with star designation from NGC. This beautiful super gem is toned in multicolored iridescence. That's most BV. That's a borders. It is smooth and attractive, a pinnacle for an advanced Eisenhower dollar collector or toning enthusiast 13. This is 1924 D. Lincoln Centinema, 65 brown condition comes with CC sticker on the PCG's holder. Iridescent pinkish rose and still blue undertones peers through an overlay of medium copper patina as the surfaces rotate under the light. All these structs threw out a very unusual characteristic of these often weakly defined date, a smooth satellite gems that makes a very positive impression on the eye. It ended up selling for $28,180.12. This is 1979 Lincoln Center. I'm a 68 red condition. The Philadelphia Mint Coin, 6 billion Lincoln cents in 1979, yet only 12 pieces have been similarly certified at PCGs. This glowing orange super gem has been has both design motifs with frost elaster and sensational eye appeal. It is destined for the finest collection $5,462.50 11. Year is 1971. Lincoln Sand was double dye of worse greater than mean state 66 read by PCGs. Moderate dye doubling is seen on all of worst letterings on this guidebook variety. Magnification is usually needed to spots a doubling. The doubling is stronger than the world liberty and in the world in God with trust. The carbon-free surfaces show well-struck design elements and set in a copper-red luster. The variety's reel is seen this fine. It was sold for $5,640 number 10. This is 1965. Roosevelt Times struck on a 90% silver plaché graded as AU55 by NGC. This is one of the most popular wrong plaché errors in today's market. A transitional one that involves a 90% plaché that a mint seized using for regular Ishidam production in 1964, with 1965 dated dies from the first year. Regular issue copper nickel clad coinage. According to Stex Powers otherwise properly struck, Although accuracy does compel us to mention trivial softness of detail along the left of worse and upper rivers, borders boldly to sharply defined elsewhere with bright brilliant white surfaces that routine appreciable mint luster. It was sold for $7,800. Number 9. This is 1970s Lincoln Cent was double diverse, graded in mid-stage 63 red by PCGs. The doubling is boldest towards the left sides of Liberty and in God with Trust, but it is visible throughout the legends as well as zero in the date. Both sides show pleasing brick red color scrape is noted between the bust of Lincoln as a date. These along with some light flex account for the grade the cherry picker's guide calls is definitely one of the rarest of all Lincoln scent varieties. It was sold for $6,325.8. This is 1971. No S. Jefferson nickel graded in PR 69 deep cameo by PCGs. This conditional rarity is among the finest. No S1971 proof Jefferson Nickel certified according to Heritage. This is conditional rarities among the finest no S1971 proof Jefferson Nickels certified. The needle sharp motifs are starkly contrasted against liquid life. Mirrored fields on both sides exhibit a hint of warm, light golden toning. It ended up selling for $8,100. Number seven here is 1942 Jefferson Nickels. 
struck on a silver alloy graded as good six by PCGs. Extremely rare transitional error. 1943 dated cents struck on a copper plant. Sheets bring spectacular prices, but similar wartime wrong ally transitional errors on Jefferson Nichols are significantly rarer. The present lot is struck SAS Mint Mark Type 1 dies yet is struck, and the silver ally composition associated with the Type 2 design bearing the large P Mint Mark Abo Monticello. This error coin ended up selling for $9,987.50 number 6. This is 1972 Lincoln. Scent was double die obverse greeted as Miss 67 read by PCGS. According to Heritage on Lenin, only the 1955 and 1969 as double die scents are more obvious than the 1972. These amazing super gym exhibits fiery orange meat, luster with reflective surfaces and eye opal gallo. The word liberty is also doubled towards the south, so words in God with trust on the obverse are also strongly doubled towards the east. It was sold for $12,925. Number five here is 1949 Roosevelt Diamond Miss 68 condition with full bands, vividly toned specimen according to Stex Powers. Obverse is painted and reached bands of colorful iridescence that intensify at the right border, showing a blend of teal, violet, and magenta hues. The reverse remains virtually brilliant, save for the slight dusting of oil patina visible under scrutiny. It fits the sum of $13,200 number four. This is 1973 S Canada of dollar error, rubble strike. Most strikes off center greeted as PR68 Ultra Cameo by NGC. The colored eye was not deployed and the plant sheet was fed wide loaf center toward eight o'clock. The second strike was west of the first strike. Remnants of the first strike include the three in the day's trust as a Kennedy's profile due to flying expansion. Most of the design is present, so the tops of the L in Liberty and the Ed in the United are incomplete. It ended up selling for $15,600 number three. This is 1919. OS Lincoln sent NPR 69 red deep cameo condition, essentially flawless and fire red. This key Lincoln memorial set is meticulously struck. Superb gem mirrored fields are so deep they appear black under the direct light surrounding frosted orange red devices. The stippled field texture seen on this set is characteristic of said no S proofs. These interesting and rare modern proof variety projects to have a surviving population of fewer than 200 coins, making it a must have rarity for series Lincoln Scent Collector. It ended up selling for $19,975 too. Here is 1983, Lincoln Scent struck on a copper planchette graded as Miss 62 Red and Brown by PCGs. The transitional alloy mint error reminiscent of the famous 1943 copper set. Though the same plated steel set was introduced in 1982, a small number of copper scent planchette found their way between 1983 dies. Perhaps the planchette lodged in a crevice of a mint bin. I was freed some time later, an orange red and apple green example that has good strike and minor reverse abrasions. It was sold for $20 3,500. Number one, as this is amazingly rare. Proof 1975. No W was what time auction was in a proof set comprised of Bicentennial, Kennedal Bicentennial, Eisenhower Dollar Bicentennial, Washington Quarter 1975, S. Jefferson Nickel, 1975 Lincoln Cent. According to Rangas, only two examples of 1975 no S time are known. The first coin was discovered in 1975, proof set in 1977. The extreme rate of 1975, no S proof time can be explained in two ways. The error was first, the error was discovered. That's a mint in a time to stop press, but not before a small quantity of sets had it already gone out the door. The coins were deliberately made. This explanation is not as far-fetched as it may seem because other remarkable proof errors emerged from San Francisco ME during the early 1970s. These lot fetched the sum of $349,600. Eight most valuable half dollars and how to spot them. 1964, Kennedy half dollars. The very most valuable half dollars tend to be the oldest, but that doesn't mean that modern examples are only worth 50 cents. The Kennedy half dollar was first issued in 1964 and they saw very heavy circulation during the 1960s. They were 90% silver in 1964, although this was reduced to 40% silver the next year and phased out completely in 1971. The most valuable Kennedy half dollars are those from 1964. One in pristine condition sold for $108,000 in 2019, 1839, half dollar proof. 
like the 1838 version, the 1839 half dollar proof is super valuable. Both were struck in the New Orleans mint and both are considered some of the most valuable half dollars you can collect. The 1839 half dollar proof is actually even rarer than the 1839 version since there are only four known examples. One sold for $299,000 in 2012, 1801 half dollar. In 1801 and 1802, the U.S. Mint changed its design for the back of the coin, featuring a heraldic eagle on the back of the half dollar. Like all mint transitions, this resulted in some different combinations of dyes. Add in that this coin is over 200 years old, and an example in mint condition can be worth a fortune. One sold in 2023 for $420,000. 1795 flowing hair half dollar like the 1794 version the 1795 flowing hair half dollar is very very rare even less common in pristine condition examples with crisp details can sell for a premium one of these coins featuring lady liberty in profile with flowing hair sold for five hundred fifty two thousand dollars in 2021 1838 half dollar proof a proof coin is one that never entered circulation so they are often in incredible condition. The thing is, they're nearly impossible to find in some years. The 1838 half dollar is one of those. In fact, experts believe this half dollar is the first proof coin made, and there were probably fewer than 20 struck. Add almost two centuries of time passing, and you get one of the rarest half dollars out there. One sold in 2014 for $763,750. 1797 half dollar. The 1797 half dollar is another incredibly rare example. Fewer than 4,000 were ever minted, and we're talking about a coin from over two centuries ago. These are not easy to find, especially in good condition. Collectors estimate there may be 324 still around. One sold for $1,560,000 in 2023, 1794 flowing hair half dollar. Tied for the most valuable title, the 1794 flowing hair half dollar also sold in 2023, for $1,800,000. This coin is just as rare, even though it's impossible to find in perfect condition. Although the U.S. Mint struck about $2,000 in 1794, 10% of them didn't meet standards and were immediately melted down. This coin started out as rare because of that. Add to that the unpopularity of the flowing hair design, which was redone soon after. 1796, stars half dollar. What is the most valuable half dollar? You probably won't be surprised to learn that it's an old one. Early in the history of the US Mint, the half dollar featured a profile portrait of Lady Liberty. Although there were a lot of half dollars minted in 1795, there were far fewer made in 1796 and 1797. The 16 star version is even rarer and it's virtually impossible to find in nearly pristine condition. This is a coin that's over 200 years old after all. One sold at auction in 2023 for $1,800,000. Coins are collected by a combination of date and mint mark to organize the collection. Each date and mint mark combination differ in scarcity. 1912. Penny value. Completing the value process of coins includes identifying the date and mint mark combination and judgment of condition. Scale of value depends on availability of the coins. In general, most early Lincoln cents, those dated 1909 to 1933 are found well-worn. Any 1912 cent in nice, lightly worn condition is a scarce coin. Helped in part by low original mintage numbers, Denver and San Francisco cents in high condition are desirable to collectors. Compare your coin to the date and mint mark images to confirm the first part of the value process. Secondly, grade condition by confirming a similar appearance of your coin to the grading image. 1912. Wheat cents as a group are an infrequent coin to encounter. 1912 represents the 10th lowest combined mintage of all varieties. Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco minted a total of 82,992,900 cents that year. Almost 83 million cents is a large number until compared to 100 years later. 2012 mintage of cents totaled just over 12 billion coins. Pleasing examples are well received in the collecting hobby. These old pennies circulated widely at the time and many simply wore out. Value discovery is the extremely fine grade and above. A lightly circulated coin with bold features to Lincoln's coat and separation of the bow tie is an exception. Overall, 1912 Philadelphia cents are somewhat abundant except in higher grades. 1943, penny value. 1943, 
Penny value reflects its unique status within the wheat scent series. A standard method is used to locate it how much it's worth on the chart. Collectors are interested in a few main factors to any coin. Date vertical bar, mint mark, vertical bar, condition. Date and mint mark collecting are a main focus to collections. Each combination is valued and listed on the chart. Also important to collectors is condition of a coin. Grading condition is guided by standards. A better than average 1943 cent stands out over lesser condition coins. Values climb with these upper grades. Placing an accurate value on your 1943 penny follows a step-by-step -step process. Step one is to confirm exact date and mint mark variety. Images used to locate mint marks finds its exact place on the chart. Second step is an appraisal of condition. Matching your coin to grading images gives a good indication of its condition. It is important to judge your coin against both the images and descriptions. Metal alloy of 1943 cents has a few considerations affecting its market acceptance. Identity of date and mint mark begins the process. Unique in U.S. mint history, three varieties of these 1943 cents were struck. Interest remains high along with demand. A composition of steel coated with zinc resulting in their distinctive color sets these coins apart. Production was Lodge 8th highest in the wheat series, 1,093,838,670 totals when combining all mints. 1943, Lincoln Penny, Philadelphia's high mintage of 1943 pennies, 684,628,670, is the fifth highest of any year wheat scent. These coins are on a rarity scale of abundant. Saving at the time contributes to the supply today. Deterioration is a concern. Rusting of the underlying steel is accelerated once the outer protective zinc is worn and removed. Absence of dark surfaces is a coin above average in preservation, abundant on a rarity scale. Denver, 1943 cents are in demand because of their uniqueness. Very popular with collectors. A light sliver gray is their normal appearance when worn, standing out and easily spotted. Many were pulled from circulation. Found in a wide range of conditions, Desirable examples are absent of both rust from the steel core and discoloration of the zinc. 1920, penny value. Popularity helps support 1920 penny value. Many of today's coin collectors are assembling sets of wheat scents. As they judge value, three main factors are important. As a popular series, attention to accurate date and mint marks is needed. Values of 1920 wheat pennies have a large range on the chart. Proceed first by confirming date. Dates are collected and valued separately. Mint marks are important to identify. Different mints struck 1920 pennies and mintage figures vary. Proceed to the section on condition. How well a coin is preserved is closely inspected and graded. Comparing your coin to the grading images finds a close match. With a rarity scale of one, abundant. Many of these old wheat pennies are around today. Most circulated until very worn. A challenge to collectors is finding nice condition coins Popularity of these early dates does support a value higher than later year cents, even if your coin is in worn condition. With so many to choose from, a superior coin displays uniform coloration no matter the grade. Dark areas and streaks of discoloration often spoil the eye appeal. Your first impression determines the overall look of the coin. 1920D Lincoln Penny. A steady increase in need for minor coinage in 1920 resulted in the mints operating on 24 and 16 hour schedules. This reported by the mints gives insight onto most Denver cents circulated and worn heavily. Note a large increase of value in the extremely fine grade. A quality 1920D penny is lightly worn or better and bold in detail. Inspect the reverse crisp lettering along the rim and one cent in the center defines a premium coin. Throughout the history of wheat cents, Branch mints are known for striking far fewer coins than the main mint in Philadelphia. San Francisco in 1920 produced less than one-seventh, 46,220,000, the number of pennies than Philadelphia. Usage of the coins was heavy and ones in nice condition are valued at a premium. 1952, penny value. Important to 1952 penny value are key elements. Mint mark recognition and a good judgment of condition. Lightly worn wheat scents are becoming collectible. Applying the step-by-step -step process of identifying. Date vertical bar. Mint. Mark vertical bar. Condition narrows its value range on the chart. Old wheat pennies are collected by dates and mint marks. Also, attention to condition plays a large role in deciding to add coins to a set. 
Collectors of all ages find uncirculated to lightly worn wheat scents appealing. Inspect closely each of your wheat pennies to separate it from the average date and condition. Follow a three-part process. Date vertical bar. Mint mark vertical bar. Condition form the key elements to value. Step 1. Dates are inspected and mint marks are identified. Branch mints placed marks on the coin to identify their production. Each variety is listed on the chart. Step 2. Compare the condition of your coin to images matching the amount of wear defining its grade. Each stage of wear is recognizable with the help of descriptions pointing to areas of focus. High production of all three varieties of wheat scents summarizes 1952 in coinage. 71% of capacity was devoted to striking scents. As in all years, look for the San Francisco mint variety to find a premium value. Philadelphia struck an adequate 186,856,980 cents in 1952, enough to meet demands. Many survive today, placing abundant on the rarity scale. Average condition of a 1952 penny is moderate wear with brown toning covering all elements of design. Indicating a coin set aside early and avoiding extensive use is traces of original red within the lettering. Collectors are always searching for coins with a pleasing quality. A faint brightness among lettering improves overall appeal. Denver's production of 1952 pennies is the eighth highest of the series. 746,130,000 coined. Another year of striking greater numbers than the other varieties. Largest numbers released places 1,952D as abundant on the rarity scale. Mint state coins are available and affordable to collectors. Circulated examples with no more than slight touches of wear are of interest to beginning collectors. An evenly toned circulated coin displaying all lines in the upper ends of the wheat ears is desirable. In a general, San Francisco scents are abundant on the rarity scale. In comparison to the two other varieties of 1952 pennies, it is the least available. Obtaining nice condition and quality examples has a greater degree of difficulty. Values underpinned by collectors reflect this scarcity. An above average 1,952S penny is boldly impressed on both sides. Faded and weakly defined lettering along the rims is often noted, lowering eye appeal. Collector preferences tend towards defined and sharp details. 1951. Penny value. Matching your coin to grading images finds 1951 penny value. San Francisco wheat scents are appealing to collectors in lightly worn condition. Begin by inspected for three main features. Date vertical bar. Mint mark vertical bar condition. When viewing the chart, date and mint mark combinations show little difference in how much they are worth in typical average condition. Listings on the chart begin with date and mint mark variety. The chart further narrows value by the condition of the coin. Grades of good, fine, extremely fine, and uncirculated are described in the grading section below. Whether it's many coins or just your 1951 cent, judging each individually is important to an accurate value. Collectors follow a step-by-step -step approach of examining. Date, vertical bar, mint, mark vertical bar condition. These steps determine how much coins are worth. Step one is identify and confirm the mint that struck the coin. Just below are images to locate any possible mint mark. Give special attention to grading condition. Reading the value chart shows the increase in desirability of higher condition coins. In the grading section, images are used to match your coin, inspecting for wear and subtle points to condition. Production of wheat pennies, all varieties combined, was the 10th highest in 1951. 1,055,941,000 struck and released into circulation. Striking the fewest was the San Francisco Mint, continuing its historical trend. Date and mint mark collecting places a slightly higher value for the S Mint cents. Ample production from the Philadelphia Mint finds this variety abundant on the rarity scale. An average quality 1951 penny has passed through circulation and is moderately worn. With popularity of collecting the wheat series and including all date and mint combinations, demand exists for these. Preferences of collectors are towards nicer quality coins, value follows. Inspect both sides of your coin with an eye towards a high profile in Lincoln's portrait and depth of lettering on the reverse. Ample detail showing separation of Lincoln's coat and lapel and a bold one cent is desirable. Denver Mint now produces more Lincoln pennies per year than other mints. Large supplies and surviving numbers places these as abundant on the rarity scale. Collectors having many to choose from seek eye-pleasing examples. 
A circulated 1,951D penny is considered above average if lightly worn and crisp in definition. A mint state example is sought with bright original reddish copper coloring and few contact marks. The $50 bills you see in this video are being sold online for a lot of money, so be careful not to spend them. Guys, I know $1.50 is a lot of money, but in this video, some of the $1.50 bills sold for a ton. Now let's start watching this video. Take a look at this damaged $50 bill that brought in $1,645 at auction. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to spend this $1.50 bill just to discover later that it sold for this much money. The truth is that PMD wrote this note when he was just 20 years old. That law has a poor rating, which very clearly indicates that people didn't find it useful. Quite a while. Before anyone understood that the back of the bill is actually reversed, it was in use and passed through people's hands. Consequently, it is upside down as can be seen when looking from the back. This is a serious error by the printing company, which is why this bill sold for $1,645. If you were to look at the back of this $1.50 note and focus only on the backplate number, you might not understand why the total amount is $1.1920. If you're not sure what that implies, it refers to the orientation of the printing plate on which this bill was printed. You should be aware that this may be relevant to particular invoices. But if it's a mule note, the back, the first print is on the back of the bill, the second print is on the front of the bill, and the third and final print is what you see here, which is upside down or reversed. Few people are aware that the reverse of the bill is actually printed first. If you find one of these with the print upside down, you're in for a treat because it costs $1,920. Okay, $2,400 for this $18,650 bill from 19. There was nothing out of the norm. The serial number seems to be valid, you can see that there will always be a letter and a number after that if you look at the plate places on the front, close to the photo of Grant. Once more, and not particularly relevant to the back of the bill, is printed first, followed by the front and overprints, as we all recall, on this particular currency. The initial print on this banknote is absent. You must thus exercise extreme caution while handling this particular bill since some viewers of our films may mistakenly believe that they can just use an eraser to remove the backs of their bills. There are several aspects to this. One, I could tell you immediately if this bill was authentic or had been altered if you were to show it to me in person. If it has been altered, a business like PMG or PCGs will be able to inform you right away. Second, you should we recommend getting it certified by PMG or PCGs since if you try to sell a bill like this, the buyer won't have trust because they don't know if it has been altered or not. You must exercise caution if you're purchasing or selling a bill like this dollar 2,400, which sold for dollar 3,840, as it can be easily manipulated. We won't spend too much time on this dollar 2,450 bill because it is somewhat difficult to discern from the front. But if you look closely, you can see that the overprint is actually out of alignment. You can see that a portion of the serial number enters Grant's forehead. There is entirely misaligned. You can see how this one might easily elude detection. Keep a watch out for print that is mismatched over and on, such as this one. This $19.7750 banknote costs more than $3,840.5040. The bill's back is now entirely normal. Nothing unusual is occurring. Keep in mind that in this instance, the front of the bills were printed second, followed by the third and final print, which was the overprint. So if you look at the front of the bill, you can see that the overprint is not doubled, but the second print or the front is. Because the second print is doubled in this instance, it serves as a fantastic illustration of the differences between the overprint and the second print. Teasing me with my gaze, always this note does. For this dollar 2,450 bill, this one went for dollar 5,040, which works out to dollar 6,721. Now, when you look at the front, you instantly note that the overprint is missing. However, it isn't until you turn the bill over to the back that you realize the overprint was inadvertently printed there in the first place. Therefore, they unintentionally fed this money upside down into the machine, which led to an error that resulted in dollar 6,721. 20. 
Don't waste new pennies. Examine this. PCGs graded a 1976 D. Lincoln Memorial coin at a mint state 65 red. That is why you will see what is known as a mint mark if you look below the date. Now this mint mark enables us to pinpoint the actual production location of this particular coin. The Denver mint is now represented by the D mint mark, and this can be significant depending on the quantity of a particular coin produced there. Looking at the front of this particular coin, you can see some small gashes and scratches surrounding the coin. That is entirely understandable given that the coins are being tossed around at the minting facility while they are being made. As previously mentioned, was produced at a mint state 65 red by PCGs. Therefore, the best grade we can receive is 70. Five points for this one. It will now be worth more money the higher the grade you receive. You'll also note that I said red. Depending on the environment and the material the coin was struck on, these coins can now be red, red, brown, or brown. Thus, this example would have sold for more money if it had received a higher rating. But consider the possibility of taking a small cent coin and turning it into $50. This particular example is what we refer to as toning. The first thing about this coin that you'll notice is the coin's striking orange, purple, and blue hues. It mostly depends on how the coin is kept. Look below the date now as well. This one comes from the Mint in San Francisco. As you can see, this coin was assigned the color red-brown because it bears the S Mint mark. The coin in the grading holder doesn't appear to be as vibrant as it did in the first few pictures when you look at the photos of it. And for good reason, the lighting is important. To bring out the coloration, businesses such as Heritage, where this coin was sold, use particular lighting angles. Even though it's all natural, the coin appears to be somewhat darker in color dot in the holder, and that's because this coin has a reddish-brown coloring. This particular coin brought in $75. Now, the reason this 1976 D coin sold for $139 is that it is an error coin with a struck-through fragment on the reverse. Thus, if you examine the coin's reverse or back closely, you can see that mint air there, which explains why it sold for $408,139. Imagine now being able to get that much money for your little pennies. That alone is a huge sum of money. There's no mint mark on this 1976 coin. This indicates that the Philadelphia Mint is the facility where this coin is made, generally speaking Philadelphia. Because they are produced in such large quantities, minted coins have the lowest value. The coin from Philadelphia will either have an AE mint mark or no mint mark at all. However, the fact that this one was inadvertently struck on a clad dime blank is the reason it sold for $408. This piece of metal was intended to be struck on a dime, but due to an error, someone struck the coin on a blank dime. There are several ways to determine whether you own one of these coins. Upon first glance, the coin appears to be incorrect. Both the color and the size are incorrect. Don't overlook the weight, though. It is what you will want to, to find out the coin's true weight, weigh it. Now, since this penny was struck on the incorrect metal, its weight will differ significantly from that of a typical 1976 penny. Verify the weight of your coins. Additionally, if you haven't already, our ebook is available for free right below. Don't forget to grab that free ebook. However, once more, this coin brought $408 or $1,080 for this 1976 cent. This one received a mint state 68 red grade from NGC. Thus, the highest possible grade for your coins is 70, and this one is just two points short of that flawless score. Getting that high of a grade now might seem simple, but however, I can guarantee you that it is by no means simple. Since there is little to no chance that you will find one of these 1976 coins and receive this high of a grade, it is likely that you will choose not to submit it for grading. Penny Value Guides Delve into the intriguing world of these rare Lincoln pennies adorned with the image of a revered president. As we embark on this adventure, we aim to uncover the secrets held within these timeless treasures. Are you curious about the potential value of your 1971 penny? Wonder no more, for we are here to shed light on this mystery. But wait, there's more. We shall delve deeper into the history, design, and uncover the fascinating realm of error coins. 
Prepare to be captivated by the stories that lie within each glorious piece. So, my friends, brace yourselves as we embark on this exhilarating quest. Get ready to expand your knowledge and ignite your passion for numismatics. Join us as we shine a light on the world of 1971 Penny Value Guides. Step this way and let the adventure begin. The scent, often called the penny after the British coin, was first issued with Lincoln's portrait in 1909. The year marked a century since Lincoln's birth, and it was the first American coin to bear an image of a real person. Earlier head sides of coins had depicted the mythological Lady Liberty. Lincoln pennies are still being produced today, but the new coins are quite different to those issued in 1971. That's partly because of what they're made from. The original Lincoln pennies were 95% copper, there was a brief switch to steel in 1943 to release copper for munitions in the Second World War. And in 1973, rising copper prices saw coins dated 1974 made from aluminum. In both cases, the experiments were short-lived. The 1971 penny was made from the original recipe of 95% copper. But in 1981, the composition changed for good. The head side of a coin is known to collectors as the obverse, and if you look at the obverse of a 1971 penny, it will look very similar to a modern scent. It carries the same portrait of Abraham Lincoln, the former president, that has appeared on scents since 1909. The image was the work of a sculptor named Victor David Brenner, and he in turn based his portrait on a photograph of Lincoln taken at the studio of Matthew Brady. Lincoln is shown wearing a jacket and cravat with only his head and shoulders visible. He faces to the right. Brenner later explained that he'd imagined Lincoln as he would have looked when reading to children, giving him a bright expression. At the lower edge of Lincoln's shoulder are a set of tiny letters. They are VDB, Brenner's initials. They had originally appeared on the reverse of the coin, but attracted controversy. Some felt they were too large, and they were removed, despite Brenner's protests. The reverse of the 1971 penny depicts the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. Look closely and you can see Lincoln's statue in the middle of the portico. That makes it one of the few American coins to portray the same person on both the obverse and reverse. The image is the work of Frank Gasparro. It was first used in 1959 to mark 150 years after Lincoln's birth. At that time, Gasparro was the mint's assistant engraver, but by the time the 1971 penny was rolling out of the presses, Gasparro had been promoted to chief engraver. He remained in that post until 1981. A gem quality MS-65 penny is worth around $1.40. At MS-67, that rises to $1.185. And the finest quality 1971 pennies known to exist are graded MS-67+. The independent coin grading agency, the PCGs, has graded seven coins at this level and they're valued at around $4,600 a piece. Focusing on eight rare and valuable coins that emerged from the vibrant era of the 1960s. These coins aren't just pieces of currency, they're captivating stories etched in metal, sought after by collectors for their historical allure and distinctive designs. If you're ready to uncover the secrets behind these numismatic treasures, hit that subscribe button and let's embark on this exciting journey together. Number 81962, Lincoln Scent graded in Mint State 67 plus read by PCGs. It is sometimes difficult to remember that the Lincoln Memorial Scent design is now more than half a century old. Despite massive mintages, these coins were not saved and are now conditioned rarities with the plus designation. This example is one of December 19, 62 Lincoln Scents that PCGs has certified with just single finer. The surfaces are brilliant and frosty with rich orange mint color. Marks and spots are absent on this superb gem. It was sold for $8,812.50, number 71961 Franklin half dollar with double die reverse graded as PR66 Cameo by PCGS E Pluribus, Unum and United exhibit remarkably strong die doubling. Other reverse legends also show doubling brilliant and prominently mirrored with outstanding preservation and noticeable cameo contrast. It was sold for $8,812.50, number six, wonderfully toned, 1,960 D Washington quarter dollar, graded in Mint State 67 by PCGs. Both sides of this superb gem display intense toning over frosty silver luster with bold design motifs. 
The obverse is mostly deep gold with burnt orange and sea green near the border. The reverse shows intermingled russet, lilac green, and blue toning. It fetched a sum of dollar nine thousand. Number five one nine six five Roosevelt dime struck on a ninety percent silver planche. Rare transitional alloy error in mint state sixty two. The U.S. mint transitioned to clad dimes during nineteen sixty five. Silver dimes continued to be struck to use up the remaining stock, but those coins were intended to be produced on nineteen sixty four dated dies but some silver dime planches were struck with 1965 dyes. This is an unblemished example with light straw gold toning save for a small area of powder blue patent and near three o'clock on the reverse. It was sold for $14,400. Number four in 1965. Washington Quarter struck on a silver planche. Another transitional error coin with the same date graded in Mint State 62 by PCGs. A transitional error struck on a leftover silver planche from 1964. Errors of this type are rare. This piece is satiny with ivory white luster and minimal abrasions for the grade. Slight strike softness is seen on the finer details of Washington's portrait. It was bargained for $16,800. Vertical bar, number three, 1964. Jefferson Nickel from Special Mint Set, graded as MS-68 Full Steps by PC Jess a phenomenal condition rarity worthy of inclusion in the finest Jefferson nickel set. Satiny surfaces are silky smooth and texture fully struck and simply a delight to behold. Exactly how many prototype 1964 SMS Jefferson nickels were produced is not known with certainty as no records were kept regarding this coinage. This rare specimen was sold for $17,625, number 21964. Lincoln sent from special mint set enigmatic experimental mint issue. According to Heritage Auctions, there is no way to explain the existence of 1964 SMS coins. These coins have a special finish, often described as falling between proof and mint state circulation strikes. They closely resemble the 1965 special mint set coinage in terms of quality. Speculation suggests the 1964 SMS coins were struck as mint trials prior to the introduction of 1965 special mint sets, or they may have served as special presentation sets, but the mint does not report any such mintage. It is thought no more than 50 1964 sets were produced. This MS-65 red scent example displays the appropriate razor-sharp strike and obvious dye polishing to create its special appearance. It was sold for $18,000, Number 11964 Kennedy Half Dollar Elusive Accented Hair Subtype graded as PR68 Ultra Cameo by NGC. The 1964 Accented Hair Variety is actually a subtype of the initial Kennedy Half Dollar issue of 1964. This issue, with its bold part in President Kennedy's hair, is seldom found with black and white contrast, and it is highly elusive. In PR68 Ultra Cameo, this superb gem is fully brilliant with frosty silver devices and deeply mirrored fields. It was sold for $19,975. 1914 D. Lincoln Cent graded in Mint State 66. Read by PCGS, according to Heritage Auctions, the 1914 D is one of the premier keys to the Lincoln Cent series, boasting one of the lowest mintages in the set with less than 1.2 million coins struck. In fact, this early Denver Mint issue is considerably more challenging in high grade than the more famous 1909 SVDB. Most Mint State survivors show up in MS-63 and MS-64 in the brown and red and brown categories. Fully red coins are much scarcer. This strongly struck premium gem features bold detail on Lincoln's hair and beard. The legends on both sides and the reverse wheat stalks are similarly razor sharp. Satiny luster glows from finely textured copper orange surfaces. It was sold for $72,000. Number June 19, 22. No D. Lincoln sent with strong reverse dye pair too. The obverse is a mushy mess. The Ellen Liberty pulled to the rim and the portrait under detailed the luster of the whole of Quicksilver gloss found only on the most put upon dyes. The reverse of course is far sharper and has a distinct swirl to the underlying luster. It displays charming surface color violet infused on both sides with a deep brown base on the obverse but distinctly redder on the reverse, which technically remains brown, but is far livelier than that name might suggest. Carbon is minimal, and marks are few on this remarkably well-preserved gem. It ended up selling for $82,250, number 51927. Lincoln Scent graded in Mint State 68, read by PCGS. This is another issue that is readily available in fully red gem condition. 
though the population drops rapidly above the grade of MS66RD, while some coins will have less than full strikes. This is not a major issue with a 1927p cent, and collectors should settle for nothing less than a sharp impression. M68 specimens are rarely encountered, though. This spectacular penny fetched a sum of $84,000 at auction number 41969S Lincoln Cent, with double dioverse graded in Mint State 64 read by PCGS. The 1969S double dioverse has been called the king of the Lincoln Cent varieties. The variety was first recognized in mid-1970, but the Discovery coins were declared counterfeit and even seized by the U.S. Secret Service. True 1969 SDDO sent displays doubling of all letterings on obverse except the mint mark. The well-preserved original red surfaces of this error penny are lustrous and appealing despite a few small amber carbon spots on both sides. Three attractively tone-proof 1909 VDB sent. This 1909 VDB Lincoln sent certified PR67 plus red and brown PCGs with the added KC gold label is a legendary coin among aficionados of map-proof Lincolns. This piece truly is a joy to behold. Generous daubs of rose pink dominate the upper hair and forehead of Lincoln, and a bit of the reverse around the tea and scent seating to light sandy orange colors accented with glints of jade throughout the fields. In the remainder of the devices on each side, the fine matte texture is completely pristine and unperturbed throughout, complementing the foolproof strike and squared off inside rims. There is absolutely no trace of carbon contact or any other distraction. It was sold for $258,500. Number two, a wartime error. Penny 1943 bronze cent graded as AU50 by PCGS AU. Standing for about uncirculated, meaning it was very briefly circulated and show slightest traces of wear on high points and fading of original luster. The 1943 bronze Lincoln cent is probably the most famous and sought after error coin of all time. The copper used for coining bronze cents was needed for the manufacture of munitions during World War II, and all Lincoln cents were supposed to be struck on zinc-coated steel planches. As fate would have it, some of the old bronze planches remained stuck in the tote bins used to feed the coin presses at the end of 1942. When coinage began in 1943, this handful of bronze planches became dislodged and fed into the presses along with millions of the regular issue steel planches creating this mysterious mint error. This error penny ended up selling for $336,000, number 11944S zinc coated steel cent, another famous and super valuable wartime era coin. Graded in mint state 66 by PCGs, the 1944 zinc coated steel cents owe their creation to the dark days of World War II when America and her allies needed strategic metals, including copper and nickel for the war effort. The 1943 Lincoln cents were struck out of a catastrophically flawed combination of metals, namely steel coated with a thin layer of zinc. As any numismatist worth his salt knows, the zinc-coated steel scent planches were magnetic. Not only did they develop rust and a powdery mildewed appearance, zinc oxide after a short time in circulation and in the presence of moisture, they also did not function in the one-cent gum vending machines prevalent at the time, which used magnets to defeat steel blanks inserted as currency. The 1944 steel scents were off-metal errors, apparently created via the same mechanism as the 1943 copper scents, when a smattering of leftover blank planches from the previous year remained in mint tote bins or hoppers as the new year turned. Although the 1943 copper scents have seen the lion's share of publicity over the years, the 1944 steel scents are nearly as rare but less well known. This error scent ended up selling for $408,000. There you have it, folks, the fascinating journey through the world of rare Lincoln scents. Do you have this dime? The extremely uncommon dime that you might have in your collection will be discussed in this video. And the last thing you want to do with a coin like this is accidentally spend it since it sold for a huge sum of money. In this video, I'll also explain how to get the most money while selling the coin. As you'll probably notice the incorrect color is one of the first things about this coin. Indeed, this is an orange dime. Now that it's orange, you might be wondering why. Well, a 2.6 gram copper platchet was used to unintentionally strike this 1975 D10 cent Roosevelt dime. It received a mid-grade from PCGS State. 
The coin has some damage because the greatest possible grade is 6,270 and 62 falls on the lower end of the mid-state grade spectrum. So, complete disclosure, this coin sold for $2,760. Although it could have brought in much more money if the grade had been better, how can you tell if you have a coin that was struck on the incorrect plan then, if not by its color? Shit. Weighing your coin is the simplest method to figure it out. Please be aware that the U.S. Mint, where these coins are produced, has a 10% acceptance rate for coin weight. Therefore, if your coin weighs little more or slightly less less, that's okay and natural. However, this coin's weight is significantly inaccurate and the color is absolutely wrong. Because of this, they claimed that it was struck on a copper plant waste, allowing it to sell for $2,760. Now, I just heard a tale about a person who took a coin like this to a pawn shop and sold it there for a few hundred dollars. You must educate yourself to ensure that you are not taken advantage of because it is a fact that certain individuals would try to take advantage of you. Additionally, if you visit many coin stores and they all tell you the same thing, please don't berate them because they're most likely telling the truth, especially if several people are corroborating what they're saying. Many people believe they own a really valuable coin that is actually not all that rare or valuable. However, you want to make sure you get the full value for your coin in those uncommon circumstances where someone genuinely has something expensive and rare. If you liked it, I'll see you in the future video. The previous video was titled, Where Can You Sell Your Coins? I received many good messages from you. I hope to help you every time in knowing the value of your own coins. In this video, we will see a valuable coin before the video if you are not a subscriber to the channel. Subscribe to the channel and activate the bell feature to receive all new updates from our channel. Let's get started. Is 1982. New pens from the United Kingdom caught fire, Elizabeth being the second. British Royal Mint coin is in circulated brown condition as you can see from the painted over surfaces that were originally copper red when it was struck. Even though the lettering is well struck, the bottom half of the bust and the here section of the queen both exhibit some softness in the circulation or strike. With another small flame flowing around the collar, one huge kneecat eye is visible on the northern rims. However, this rich coconut brown patina next to the light queen's chain is the primary source of diversion. Don't forget to click the subscribe and leave buttons below if you haven't already done so. More than 408 million bronze were struck by British royal means. In 1980, we added two new pen parts. These coins initially featured the word new inserted onto the reverse design to prevent confusion between the old and new coinage. Later, this was taken down. Since 1980, there have been 43 years of coins in use. The new pens introduced by Elizabeth II in 1980 are not regarded as rare or priceless. In the United Kingdom, it was a widespread circulation coin, and it is still seen frequently today. A portrait of Queen Eliza, the second verse, and the designation for new pens on the rivers are all featured in the design. Even though some coin collectors could be interested in acquiring this coin for their collection, it doesn't have a high value and isn't rare. Factors including condition minting, mistakes, and distinctive variants could possibly raise its value a little, but it's doubtful that it would be worth much. NGC price cut estimates that they are worth 20 cents in MIS 6330 in MS60 condition and 50 cents in MS65 condition. However, uncirculated coins occasionally fetch between $1 and $7.08 on eBay. All okay, bye for now. Please click the thumbs up and subscribe icons below if you enjoyed the video. Prepare yourself for an exciting journey into the world of coin collecting as we uncover the fascinating tales behind the 2022 and 2023 Washington quarters that fetched extraordinary sums on eBay. Come along as we discuss the worth of these unforeseen riches. Therefore, let's jump right in and explore the fascinating world of coin auctions, where every quarter could result in a great surprise. Take this instance right now. So this is a five proof set of 2023 S silver quarters. The interesting thing about this is that the seller is asking $65 for them online. Currently, this person is purchasing them online for $30 and then selling them on eBay for $65. So that's simply a simple how this guy is generating income. 
This sample shows a fresh error. In their current terminology, they refer to this as a clipped plancher. I do believe that this is a genuine mistake. On eBay, it was sold for $98.99. But since it's so simple to make the same mistake, I'd exercise extreme caution if purchasing or disposing of a coin like this. Here is a roll that fetched 269 Uzrals. So, if you wanted to discover something similar and sell it for a lot of money, you would have to do this. You may get fresh stacks of quarters like this from your neighborhood bank. Because they don't have to be doing this, all you have to do is ask and act politely for all of you. However, someone took these coins to a bank, bought them, and later sold them for 269. The problem is that someone will search through these rolls in search of cold airs. For these criminals, the thrill of the chase never ends, which is why someone would pay such a high price for it. This is awesome. So someone gathered all 10 American women and graded them. You can see that they have a really cool special label there, thanks to some excellent marketing on the part of PC Jess. And for that reason, these coins could be sold for $300 by someone. Okay, so this coin fetched $357 at auction, which is just absurd. What a large sum of money. If you examine these images, some of the elevated portions are visible. This is referred to as a retained die break combined with a reverse split die QD. Therefore, if you had a 2022 Wilma Man killer quarter such to this one, you might exchange a zero or 25 coin for $357 just as this guy did for $739.95 for a 2022 S. Nina Otero Warren. NGC graded a 25 cent quarter for me in state 68. Therefore, this guy had the coins evaluated before selling them for a lot of money online. Air is quite chilly here. The price of this one was $679 plus $5 for shipping for a 2023 P quarter. That is a significant sum of money. That air is visible through this coin, which is why it sold for $679 plus $5 shipping. Here is a unique set of American silver quarters rated at 70 proof by NGC. These were sold for $769, $70 by this guy who only had one of them. NGC Adamant State scored a second 2023 Eleanor Roosevelt American Woman quarter at 68. This one cost $899.91 per unit and there were three of them in stock. A 2022p quarter air coin that sold for $1,900 is shown here. So, gentlemen, here's the truth about this coin. There are some dishonest people out there who will try to con you. So you have to be paying extremely close attention because this is a far too high price for this coin. We are fairly certain that this particular sale is not legitimate. I hope that this was a phony bid and nobody was taken advantage of. That does occur occasionally. There is more information about our Coin Value Club down below. If you wish to join our private coin collecting club where you can ask any queries regarding your coins, but you're not required to, thank you so much for viewing and we'll see you in the future video. Don't spend any of the coins you see in this movie since you might make a costly error if you do. Instead, pay attention and refrain from doing so. Now, we have all previously seen these Wisconsin coins. Even though I grew up collecting these from 2004, I was unaware of their potential value. I mean, this particular coin here is valued at $6,000. Before I tell you what to look for, allow me to swiftly lower your expectations. The majority of Wisconsin coins you discover won't be worth $6,000, but the finder of this coin was able to locate it, have it graded, and sell it for that amount what then do you require looking for? So pay attention because it's all in that corn stalk on the back. The PCGs assigned this coin a Mint State 67 rating. That is three points short of the ideal score of 70, which is an accomplishment in and of itself. Thus, there are three different varieties of this coin. Either a high leaf, a low leaf, or no leaf at all will be present. Extra low leaves are the type you want to seek for because they may be worth more money. The front below is another area to pay attention to. You'll see a tiny little D mint mark next to the phrase, in God we trust. The Denver mint is indicated by the D mint stamp on this A coin was made. You can order coins from Denver, West Point, San Francisco, or Philadelphia.
Philadelphia coins typically lack a mint mark, although the other factories do. If you happen to have an additional low-leaf coin from 2004, it's a Wisconsin quarter, and it grades similarly well by PC to this coin. Given that this coin sold for $6,000, you could have a very valuable coin at the age of 67. You may not be aware that this tiny Roosevelt penny sold for $21,150, and this is the reason. So this coin is a proof. However, if you have a coin like this, it will be worth more than the average proof coin. Consequently, this one received a, at a proof, 68 PCGs. Even though this coin has a lot of hue, toning, a naturally occurring process that occurs when the air oxidizes a coin, depending on how it is stored, is what you are actually seeing. Now that this coin is receiving a lot of queries, let me try to clear things up. In essence, the majority of individuals will possess a coin that bears the year 1968 and has no mint mark below the date. You have a coin that was struck in Philadelphia then. I'll show you the difference right here if you have a proof coin. Proof coins have no S mint mark and only the background or field of the coin. That identifies the coin as being of the no S kind. Basically, it's a mistake that few people are aware of, but that's all there is to it. Now, you must exercise extreme caution because after viewing our films, some people may decide to purchase a 1968 Roosevelt dime that was struck in Philadelphia without a minimum mark and polish it to make it seem a coin struck in San Francisco without an estimate mark. These proof coins typically carry an estimate mark, but this one does not, which is why it's sold for $21,150. Speaking of mint marks, this one went for $19,800 since the mint mark was truly punched out rapidly. There is a PCGS awarded a Mensa 66 as an excellent grade classification. This has the mint repunched mark. Therefore, on the coin's right-hand side back, if you look extremely closely, you will see a D mint mark. This has that repunched mint mark, which can be seen if you use a magnifying glass or a USB microscope to zoom in. Its high grade and mint state 66 alone made it possible for it to sell for $19,800. Please hit the like button if you learned something from this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Get ready to uncover the hidden treasure of the 1943 quarter value. At a minimum, it's a whopping $3.82, but hold on tight because we're about to take this adventure to the next level. If your quarter is from the Denver or San Francisco mint and in uncirculated condition, we're talking about a value of $1.30 to $1.32. And guess what? The Denver mint steals the show, being the most valuable of them all. Now, the San Francisco coins may be a little less rare, but don't count them out just yet. And hey, if you happen to stumble upon a Philadelphia mint quarter without a mint mark, no worries. With over 100 million of those in circulation, they still hold their silver bullion value unless they're in uncirculated condition. So keep your eyes peeled because the treasure hunt for your 1943 quarter value is on. Condition is very important to collectors and dealers when price is considered. The impressive Washington quarter pictured is an example rising to the top of the value scale. Never circulated and nowhere, a very desirable coin. Identifying mint marks, and especially condition accurately, combines to reveal how much your 1943 quarter is worth today. The coin value chart breaks the prices down by date, mint mark, and state of preservation. The 1943D is a quarter minted by the Denver Mint in 1943, and values are given in four different grades. How to grade your coins is covered below. 1943 quarter value by grade from brand new condition to very worn condition is reflected in the examples. Line your quarters in a row, judge their state of preservation, and assign each a grade. As you proceed, handle each coin carefully, keeping in mind 1943 quarter value is highest for uncirculated coins. Uncirculated, best described as never been touched, appearing as if fresh from the mint. The color of the coin is either bright silver white or naturally toned. Technically, the requirement is the total absence of wear. Look for the first evidence of abrasion from circulation showing as a break of the delicate luster on the cheeks. Extremely fine. Slight wear confined only to the highest points of the design. The areas of focus to determine grade are the hair details towards the top of Washington's head, the curls above the ear, and the cheeks near the eye. Easily described as a crisp and collectible coin. Fine wear has begun to take its toll on this coin. Flattened areas of wear cover Washington's hair and curls. Although the hairline along the forehead is visible, 
Good, all the major details show, but very flattened by wear. The tops of the letters have begun to merge into the rim. In this grade, 1943 quarter values their silver content. Before starting the video, I humbly request you to subscribe the channel and like the video. If you are damn serious to earn money, then I will teach you to make money through rare and valuable old coins to buy them and sell them at high prices. Today, we're going to be talking about a very special coin, the 2010 Elizabeth II five cent nickel. This coin is valued at an incredible $50,000, making it one of the most valuable coins in the world. The 2010 Elizabeth II five cent nickel is a Canadian coin that was minted in 2010. It has a mintage of 126,800,000 and is made of 94.5% steel, 3.5% copper, and 2% nickel. It weighs 3.95 G and has a diameter of 21.1 millimeters. The edge of the coin is plain. The coin was designed by Susanna Blunt and Susan Taylor on the obverse and G.E. Kruger Gray and Thomas Shingles on the reverse. The engraver was the same as the designers, the 2010 Elizabeth. The second five cent nickel is valued at an incredible $50,000. This is due to a number of factors, including its rarity, its condition, and its significance to Canadian history. The coin is very rare as only a small number of them were ever minted. This is because the coin was released in the same year as the Canadian War of 1812 Bicentennial, and many of the coins were hoarded by collectors. The coin is also in very good condition as it has been well-preserved since it was minted. This is due to the fact that the coin is made of steel, which is a very durable metal. Finally, the coin is significant to Canadian history because it is the first Canadian coin to feature the image of Queen Elizabeth II. This is because Queen Elizabeth II ascended to the throne in 1952, and the 2010 five-cent nickel was the first coin to be minted after her ascension, the 2010 Elizabeth. The second five-cent nickel is a very special coin that is valued at an incredible $50,000. This is due to a number of factors, including its rarity, its condition, and its significance to Canadian history. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel for more Coins of Rosie. You can visit my channel and watch the videos to know high prices of old and rare coins of all the world and how to sell them and make money in $1 million. So many people confuse this coin with this coin and this coin right here sold for $54,000, while this coin is only worth a few dollars at most. Now this coin that sold for $54,000, there's a few small things and reasons why it sold for this much. And you don't wanna miss these things because you don't wanna end up selling your coin for a few dollars when it's worth this much money. The sad reality is a lot of people don't know what to look out for on their coin collections. You know, whether or not you were given a collection from a friend or a family member, it doesn't really matter. You know, there's a probability of finding coins like this out in pocket change or you getting spare change back from the store. It's possible, but it's really rare to come across a one little penny that's worth $54,000. So I'm going to tell you exactly the difference here. So if you look at this coin that sold for $54,000, you'll see that it's a 1944 D one cent penny here. This was struck on a zinc-coated steel planche. Every 1944 penny that you have should be struck on a bronze planche. So this is considered a mint air. A coin like should have never got out into circulation. You can see that most 1943 pennies are going to be struck on a steel plant like this. But if you have a 1944 penny and it looks like this, that's a big issue. Definitely a good issue to have. But you wanna make sure that if you have a penny like this that you're taking it to someone that's reputable someone that knows what they're looking at, I recommend against going to any sort of pawn shop. Do your research, do your homework. That's why you're watching videos like mine. If you're new to my channel, I release videos like this all the time. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos, but this one little penny here can be worth so much money. And then also this coin was graded by PCGS, a mint state 62, which is not that high. Most coins that were graded at a mint state grade, meaning uncirculated. They usually grade at a 64 or higher, but this one has some damages that are happening to the coin, which reduces the grade of the coin, also reducing the overall value. The highest grade we can get in grading is 70, and if this coin was so grade higher than 62, it would have brought a lot more money than $54,000, still a lot of money. So again, the biggest difference here is the date. If you have a 1943 versus a 1944, you want to be looking out for that 1944 penny that is struck on a zinc-coated steel planche. 
Hit that subscribe button really just help out with the algorithm. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next video. Take a look at these new quarters that are fetching a high price on the internet. You don't want to pass these coins up and perhaps lose out on a lot of money so I don't want you to miss any of them. S. Take careful attention. Let's dive straight into this S hilarious video. We have an NGC Adamant State 66 graded 2022 S Anime Wong 25 cent quarter. It's the first day of coin issuance right now. This is an example of a reverse struck through air, so the person basically bought it on the first day of release, mailed it to NGC, got this special label, and was able to sell it online for a high price. Anime Wong appears to have a small problem around her eye if you look at her face. This reversing strike through air is hopefully nothing too serious. Thus, what actually happened was that an error was made in the creation of this coin during the minting process, which resulted in the air. Errors such as these have worth, which is why this coin was purchased for $100. Okay, $300 for this one. Thus, we have a coin from Bessie Coleman's first day of release. Once more, I submitted it in on the first day of the issue and received a special label, although this is what's known as a partial collar. Thus, by examining the coin's surrounding areas, you may observe what's referred to as a half collar. Here's another minting error that occurred. They had no intention of it looking like this, but someone saw it, managed to get it certified by NGC, and sold it online for $300. This 2022 Wilma Mankiller Air has a reverse significant die crack and an obverse retained sud at the top of the coin. Now here's the deal. In 2022 and 2023, the US Mint is going to produce a ton of coins. That kind of volume means there will be more mistakes. There is a lot of pressure on them to make these coins and errors like this will go unnoticed, enter the market and costs people money for them. Things like this are what collectors adore to see. They desire to add the newest, coolest air to their assortment. For my part, I don't really enjoy making huge purchases. You know, I would definitely buy one if this coin cost five or $10. However, $325 like it sold for? That sum of money is far too much to spend. However, there are those who are prepared to shell out a substantial sum of money for these coins. Thus, once more, we get an obverse retained cud and a reverse large die crack. It is sold for $325 because of this. I just wanted to provide you with another illustration to show you guys that these coins are real and plentiful. Here, the problem is the same. On the front top of the coin, there is a retained cud, and on the reverse or rear, there is a massive die break. Guys, these coins are available. Seek them out should you come across one. This instance is for $360. I wanted to show you this other merchant once more. I will make this argument very clear for all of you. You can tell there are a lot of these coins out there because I just discussed three of the same kind. In this case, there are two major mistakes, the large die crack on the back and the retained cut at the top front. This coin brought in $450. Join the coin value club below to find out how much your coin is worth. You can email us a picture from the comfort of your own home. We will inform you of the value of your currency as well as the best course of action to optimize its worth. We'll see you in the upcoming video and are excited to see you inside. There's a rare coin in the globe that is selling for an astounding $21,811.50, shattering all previous records. Why is this penny coin so valuable? And why is it making such a stir? We're going to be unlocking the mysteries around its worth today, showing you what to look for and what the main distinctions are. Prepare to discover the keys to making a lot of money with your own pennies. As we cover it, no question will go unanswered. Everything is fine here. Now that you're prepared to explore the field of numismatics, press the play button and let's get going. Let me show you another amazing coin, nevertheless, that sold for an astounding $9,600 before we go. You won't want to miss it, I assure you. Prepare yourself for a thrilling journey into the realm of rare coins. Now let's begin this video and ask any other questions you may have in the comments below. I'll start by briefly demonstrating a coin that brought in $9,600. Although this coin and the one we'll talk about next are very identical, this variety has a considerably more noticeable double die averse. This one has a Mint State 67 plus red PC GS grade with an ACC label. We will quickly go over every single thing on this coin AKC sticker. After the coin has been graded, you send it to CAC, and if they think it looks very great, they will add a decal on it. 
the AKC sticker is on the holder. No matter how ridiculous it seems, that CAC sticker will increase the value of the coin. Additionally, this coin was rated as Mint State 67 Plus. Stated differently, the coin was graded and authenticated by an A grader who said, wow, this looks really nice. We are going to designate that as a bonus. Consequently, the coin's value will increase due to the plus designation. Three points separate you from the perfect score of 70. Let's not forget the red indicator. Red, red, brown, or brown are the possible colors of Lincoln pennies, depending on the environment. The next stage is to determine the kind of metal composition that the cone is hit on. Owing to, due to the red indication on this coin, red coins are more expensive and are typically sought after by collectors since they more closely resemble the intended mid-state design. The hub is the location of the doubling. As a result, these hubs seem to have been miraculously doubled before the coin is struck. In general, the value of a doubling increases with its degree of evidentiary quality. $1,960. Again for that. But this coin is from the same year that it is in front of you. Another double die bargain but more difficult to locate. Because there were two bids who really, really wanted this artwork. It's not as obvious and obvious. The price was $21,811.50. They took part in what is called, they engaged in a bidding war, raising their offers until one of them gave up. It was the loser. It seems a little strange now that I think about it, but a small feature will make a coin like this really valuable. The PCGs graded this one as a mid-state 66 red. Again, this doubling has a lesser strike variation when there is a double die aversion. In this case, it's crucial to realize that you may need to use some sort of magnification in order to see the doubling that is occurring. This coin was purchased for $21,811.50. Please click the subscribe button and view some of our other material if you enjoy this video. We are featured in the following.